welcome back. We are shifting gears right about now as we'll be looking at the economy uh, moving forward. Sometime last week, the NBS did re re I mean, release uh, uh, the, the Nigerian Poverty Index, which puts uh, 133 million Nigerians under the poverty line. Sad narrative, I must say. It is called, uh, it says 133 million Nigerians are multidimensionally uh, poor. Um, let's speak with the DG of, um, of, of the Nigeria Employers uh, Consultative Association, talking about um, uh, uh, Wale Oyerinde. Yes, I hope I got the first name right. I know it's Wale Oyerinde uh, this, this morning. Let him give us an insight. Yes, yes, yes. Wale Smart. Wale Smart Oyerinde is the DG of NECA. Uh, so good to have you joining us on the show, uh, sir. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks for having us. We're happy we were able to pull you out of your very busy schedule this morning to talk to us. Uh, let's look at the economy, and I'm sure it concerns all of us. It really does affect all of us. 133 million na Nigerians uh, are dimensionally uh, between, within the poverty, poverty line. Uh, what can NECA make of this um, report by the NBS, and how, how worrying is this report? Thank you, and good uh, morning once again. Uh, as I have rightly said, you know, the figure that was rolled out by the NBS is, is quite worrisome, and it raises a lot of concern, not only to the organized private sector, but also to all uh, planning or responsible Nigerians. Because with our population, ordinarily, you see, we are in a prime place for productive activities that businesses operating in this environment should ordinarily be glad that we have this kind of population that can that are potential off takers for whatever product or services that is produced in this country and the context of the african continental free trade has also shown us that look, our population if not well addressed, might be a cause in the context of other African countries, productive activities are higher than hers. We leverage on our, our population to drive them. Now, having laid that background, the poverty level or the rate of poverty or the numbers turned out by the NBS became even more worrisome when you look at the implications. Now, for a business to survive, probably using goods or services. And if a large of your potential clients are incapacitated or they are living below poverty line, so their ability to patronize you as a business will be compromised. And that those figures are not, um, are not far from the truth. They probably could be worse because with the high inflation rate, with the erosion of the purchasing power of an average Nigerian, with so many issues that we face, issues bordering on power, issues bordering on regulatory incursion into business activities, issues bordering on inconsistency and alignment of fiscal and monetary policies, all those issues together you know, have conspired to bring us to where exactly we are today. So it is worrisome because if those cannot patronize a business, then the survival of the business itself is under threat. And if those business cannot survive, it's normally, logically, we say that they also will probably disengage more staff, which will also constitute to more people going out of productive, more people going out, going into the, below the poverty line with diverse social and economic consequences for our country. So it's a worrisome trend and a trend that all the Southern Nigerian uh, said must rise up to face and face squarely. You know, I'm, I'm happy you brought about uh, the concern around um, policy. Uh, policy uh, as it concerns the business environment. Uh, we have seen, we have listened, we've heard a series of um, concerns from the 
operators within the private, the OPS, uh, the manufacturing sectors around policies of government. Just um, to sometime last week, we did hear uh, that um, government is proposing a 20, 20 naira per litre, uh, uh, yes, per litre ta tax on um, carbonated um, beverage drinks. And then the players are wondering, uh, just in June, you imposed a 10, a 10 naira per litre on us, and then you're coming up with another 20 naira per litre, I mean 20 naira per litre on carbonated drinks on the same sector. Uh, these are concerns around uh, the manufacturing sectors that if not dealt with or not reviewed, could plunge many more Nigerians into the poverty line by reason of unemployment and all of that. Uh, so tell us how much do you think policy policy can help uh, can help address this concern around them um, uh, multi-dimensional uh, poverty concerns? Thank you very much. You know, globally, as 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 we know, you know what drives economic activities are basically policies and regulations. Now you can either decide as a government or as a people to come up with policies that we promote productive activity. We come up with policies that will be interesting enough to attract foreign direct investment, policies that we encourage and inspire local investors to continue to invest. Alternatively, you can decide to come up with policies that stifles businesses, policies that makes your environment, your business environment uninteresting for foreign direct investment. This is no rocket science. Now, the issue of the excise duty you mentioned, there was an ink, there was a roadmap that was set earlier in the year. Six months down the road, because of a paucity of revenue, you know, revenue issues that we literally brought. And rather than face the consequences or come up with more ingenious ways of resolving our revenue challenge. We feel, or some persons in government feel good, or the option is to tax the already overtaxed this environment. And our perspective is this if you overburden a lot, you probably will kill it. If you increase the burden of the tax, and our guess we probably pass the consequences of that increase. It might accept some of those consequences a chunk of it to the consumer. Now, if the consumer that is already burdened with so many issues and is disposable income is already going to negative, if he's not able to buy those products, you drive the consumer further below the poverty line and you also drive the business closer to extinction. Because if you cannot sell your stock, then are you going to make profit? If you are not making profit, how will you expand to employ new new staff? If you are not making profit, how will government generate corporate tax? How will government make tax make income even from PE? So it's a whole consequential effect. And I'll be with this also that rather than look at a policy and for whatever reason or the allure of revenue generation, you implement without consulting extensively the operators in that environment we are doing more damage than good. And we've said over time that look, let there be a alignment, proper alignment between the fiscal and monetary policies. Look, we don't make policies for policy's sake. Policies are made to drive the economy. And while you are making those policies, a big factor or a critical stakeholder you must consider, and you must consider very well, are the operators in that sector. If we don't, we'll have great policies that makes production in Nigeria very uninteresting. We'll have created policies that makes importation attractive and also that makes illicit trade even much more attractive. Hit the nail on the head. Uh, the, the need to begin to align monetary and fiscal policies uh, could also be a way of dealing with them. Um, uh, this multi-dimensional poverty uh, concerns that the NBS had raised. Let's look at uh, uh, the state, the state governments, and uh, how they can uh, come in by reason of interventions uh, uh, to bring Nigerians uh, within their states out of uh, 
out of poverty. Uh, how much do you think uh, the state governments can do? Because uh, when you look at the results, uh, the reports from, from the NBS, you realize that uh, it trickles down to the grassroots and then the local governments are the closest uh, uh, gov level of governance to the grassroots and then the state government and it goes on and on like that. Uh, do, you think, uh, do you think state governments are done well enough in, because we, we can't keep hammering on the federal government uh, as a power at the center. Uh, there, is, uh, there are, there are uh, governing bodies that are closest to the people, which are the state and the local governments. How can the Lagos, um, that's the Lagos, how can the state governments really come in here and ameliorate uh, uh, the, the, the level of poverty that Nigerians are, are going through? You know, it's, it's we, are, we, are, we, we live within the context of so many contradictions. And until we start addressing those contradictions, we'll probably not, um, not get out of the room. You know, a, a sage, someone said, if you find yourself in a hole, you know, the first thing you stop doing is digging. So if you find yourself in a hole, the first thing a rational mapping we do is to stop digging. But unfortunately, we, st we seem to be digging digging ourselves further into this into this quagmire. It will interest you to know that uh, during this week, or early last week, there was a report that most of the local government areas in Nigeria, they rejected the local government autonomy in the constitution, a provision that makes, or that will guarantee the autonomy of the local government so that the revenue directly from the federation account can, can be paid to the local government rather than paid to the state government that now decides this proper, this proportionately or this with a high level of discretion how they will distribute that income to the local local government. Ordinarily, you expect the local government to support that move, that let them be independent so that they can they can render services to the grassroots. Now coming to your question, you know. Until we stop this rent-seeking rent seeking, um, process that we currently run, where everybody at the end of the month run to Abuja cap in hand to draw from, um, from the national post, from the federation account, it cannot work. Until the state of the federation become very creative. Nigeria is blessed with arable land. Nigeria is blessed with minerals. Hardly will you find a state where you will find some level of mineral. A few days ago, it was mentioned that oil is being drilled in the north. Mineral resources is everywhere. Government at the state level must be creative enough to maximize not only the natural resources that are inherent in their in their domain, but also resources. Because we are still scooping oil, because revenue is being shared, and because most importantly, Creditors are still borrowing us money until we get to a point where oil becomes unattractive and then the creditors are refusing to, to borrow, to borrow us more money, then we'll be forced to look inwards and come up with creative ways at all the state level. You know, some states are doing very well. They are coming up with innovative ways to be sustainable until we run those states as businesses. Businesses that are made sustainable, businesses that are meant to produce and also contribute to the national wealth who won't go, won't go anywhere. The politics is ongoing. A lot of a lot of politicians are saying what and what they will do. But the critical issue is how exactly are they going to do it? I think those are the narratives Nigerians should be asking. Not the, the, the not the the current, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. I think the narrative should boil down to exactly how. Are you going to do all this thing? We must challenge those that are contesting for state government governments to, the, to those that are contesting to go for the governor's government house. What exactly are you going to do to turn this state around? What innovative way are you going to do, or a creative way are you going to bring in to turn the fortune of this state around beyond borrowing? You know, sometimes we focus too much on the old quantum of debt debt of the federal government. If you do the analysis of how much each state is owing, it's also among us, which also creates enormous challenge for, for, for generations um, even yet unborn. So it is not a 
federal government uh, concern. It, is, it shouldn't be uh, just about the federal government. It's a concern around the states, the local governments, and uh, all of us are involved. Our population would have been a strength, uh, but unfortunately, it has suddenly become a burden as we seem bedeviled on virtually every side. When we look at the multidimensional uh, poverty index, you look at education, health, uh, you know, lack of access to good education, lack of access to good health care system, and many others. Uh, uh, we hope we could have more time on this conversation, uh, Mr. Wale. Well, you're in the DG of NECA, but I could always tell you that we always touch base. Uh, we did touch base with you about uh, two weeks ago. We always, also always touch base with you again going, going forward. Once there are concerns, uh, we'll come to you. I mean, just, just to let you know that um, there was a World Bank report yesterday asking government to uh, begin to spend more. You begin to ask, where would this money come from? Many concerns uh, that have been raised about the nation's economy we will stay on them. Thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Wale Oyeride. Uh, DG. If you, if, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you please permit me just to make a last comment. Go ahead. It's also just to appeal to, to the legislatures, to the, the um, House of Representatives, various committees yes. that are still writing, also a morning organized businesses to Abuja for one investigative um, uh, meeting or the other one appeal that we've written and we've expressed our concern at the destructive, not only the of those investigative investigative summons, we also said, look, we have approached um, the relevant um, authority as a case in court. We should wait for the court to adjudicate on this matter. It's also part of the rule of the house that once a matter is in court, you know. Parties should not, the House should not discuss it, or, or no action should be taken on that issue. But we still have member companies still receiving letters of someone yeah, for one investigative investigative um, conversation or the other. I want to appeal to the committee, also appeal to the speaker, also appeal to the Senate president to help us to call these committees to order. Let us wait. We are in a constitutional democracy. The Some agencies of the executives, they've been given the constitutional mandate yes. to supervise this organized they the have issues sector. they should liaise with those agencies of the executives to address those issues yes not making laws and also attempting to be the ones to implement and monitor those laws that is our appeal thank you so very much uh, uh mr wale 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 or you're in the wale smart or you're in the thank you for always appearing on uh, station every time we call on you. Always a pleasure. Do have yourself a productive uh, Tuesday and bye for now. Oh yes, so that is our show today. Ah, it's been quite interesting. Uh, conversations around fuel, uh, scarcity, conversations around um, uh, CUPP and the many revelations that they have made and now the multi-dimensional poverty conversation. Fantastic. Thank you all for your time with us on the show, all our callers, all our listeners, and all uh, our viewers. We appreciate you always. We'll do this again tomorrow, uh, God willing. Hopefully that uh, the full uh, scarcity conversation would have probably uh, gone down. Hopefully we can open that conversation tomorrow on the show. Uh, let's know what exactly the issues are. That's our show. I am David Obabudike. Do have yourself a fantastic Tuesday. Uh, stay safe, share some love, and stay out of trouble, and bye for now.